still up there. Hey everyone, hope you're doing well. We are going to Montello to look for a swallow-tailed kite and Ryan was able to see it yesterday, I was busy and so we are going back up there today so that I can hopefully get a look at it. And seeing any kind of kite has been something that I thought would always be really cool. They just seem so majestic and uh, I'm really excited to have the opportunity to try and go see this one. With dark clouds ominously dotting the sky, we started the two hour drive north to Marquette County. With only limited time before the rain came, we hope to get a look at the kite before it settled in for the impending storm. The kite is normally found in the southern United States, Central and South America, making it an extreme rarity in Wisconsin. On the way, we stopped to observe what we thought was a group of wild turkeys. Upon further inspection, we noticed it was actually a flock of domesticated, helmeted guinea fowl, a unique bird that's not native to the United States. The helmeted guinea fowl is a large-bodied bird with a hump-backed appearance. They have a small head and a dark coloration on their body with white spots, a bony structure on the top of their head, and sometimes a loose flap of skin below their jaw. They are native to Africa, but domestication has brought them to a variety of different parts of the world, such as the United States. These noisy, screechy birds were primarily domesticated for their meat, eggs, and pest control abilities as they eat ticks and other unwanted insects. They are capable of flight, but prefer not to fly, often walking long distances, up to six miles in a day. They feed on insects, fruit, arachnids, greens, worms, and more. They are very social birds that often flock, and during mating season, the male and female bird call together in something of a duet. Nests are made on the ground, and individuals often egg dump, meaning they will lay their eggs in another nest to be incubated by a different female. Normally, six to 12 eggs are laid at a time, and the young are called keats. We only spent a short amount of time observing the guinea fowl before heading up to the spot where the kite was last seen. It likes to fly over this low-lying area, and it usually shows up when it starts to warm up and the larger insects come out, which is what it feeds on. We spent the next half hour scanning the trees as storm clouds loomed overhead. So yesterday it was perched in this tree back there, but I don't see it today. But there's a lot of perching trees around here, so it could be in any of them just waiting. So it uh, clears up a little bit. While scanning, we noticed a medium-sized bird hopping from tree to tree that seemed quite elusive. Still up there. After a couple minutes of watching, we were able to ID it as a black-billed cuckoo. The black-billed cuckoo is a thin bird with a hunched posture, black bill, long tail, brown body, white stomach and chin, and a red eye ring. They are known for being secretive and will often remain still when perched, making them difficult to locate. They normally live in woodlands and feed on insects, but seem to particularly feast on caterpillars. When eating spiny caterpillars, the spines stick to their stomach lining. As a result, the lining is shed every so often and coughed up in a pellet similar to an owl pellet. A relative of the black-billed cuckoo, the common cuckoo, is known for laying its eggs in the nest of other birds. However, black-billed cuckoos normally build their own nest and raise their own young, although they will lay eggs in another nest on occasion. The black-billed cuckoo nest is quite flimsy and small, about 6 inches in diameter and under 1 inch deep. They are most common in the eastern United States, but can also be found in Central America and parts of South America. While the cuckoo was a nice find, we were starting to lose hope on the kite making an appearance when suddenly we saw a black and white shape emerge from behind the trees. It was the bird we were looking for, the swallow-tailed kite. The swallow-tailed kite is a large, sleek raptor with a white body, black wings, a deeply forked tail, and a hooked bill. They're native to the southeastern United States to Central and South America and spend most of their time soaring in the air, routinely circling low over trees in search of small animals to feed on. Their diet includes insects, frogs, lizards, small birds, snakes, and other vertebrates. Food items are picked from the trees with the bird's talons and are often eaten during flight. Swallowtailed kites have thicker stomachs than normal raptors and they will occasionally take an entire nest of singing insects 
eat the larvae and add the nest material to their own nests. Nests are built in open woodlands at the tops of trees. At the end of summer, swallowtail kites will leave the U.S. and migrate to South America. Because of its striking appearance and aerial acrobatics, the swallowtail kite has sometimes been described as the coolest bird on the planet. Isn't that awesome? That is awesome. I'm so glad that you got to see it, Derek. I was really worried that it wasn't going to show. What a cool bird. It can just make these turns so quickly. It'll just be going straight and it'll just dive down and, and go, go and catch something. So what an awesome bird to see. Well, we saw the guinea fowl on the way here. Which, have you, have you seen guinea fowl before? I've never seen a guinea no. fowl before, so no. That was new for both of us. Cuckoo was new for me. And then, uh, kite was new for me. Kite was new for you as of yesterday. I feel so like you were more excited about the cuckoo than the really kite. I was really pumped about the cuckoo. Because cuckoo's not like a thing you can really, like if it's reported, it's hard to just go there and find it. So it's like I've been waiting to see it for a long time because it's just kind of one of those birds that you happen upon. You know what I mean? Yeah. But the kite was awesome. It was so maneuverable. It just like, it'd be going in a straight line and then it just de would dive down immediately. Well, I feel like we were lucky that we saw it when we did because I bet it's going to roost somewhere now that it's raining out. It might. And we got that little clear window of viewing for like 15 minutes. And it really just came out of nowhere. Like we weren't seeing it at all. And then all of a sudden it appeared. So it must have been roosting somewhere before that because I don't think it was flying around. Is it worth the two hour drive? Definitely. It kind of looks the like... Cuckoo. <laughs> for the cuckoo? For the cuckoo and the kite. We left Marquette County just as the rain picked up. We felt glad that we managed to take advantage of the narrow window while the kite was active. It's always amazing to see a bird so far out of its normal range, let alone a bird as elegant as the swallow-tailed kite. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Badgerland Birding. We are headed to Montello to look for a swallow-tailed kite. And Ryan was up there yesterday. Continue he found on it. to County Road I. Ah. That's Yeah, we're going to County Road AI, which apparently on the GPS registers is County Road I. But the guinea fowl. The guinea I fowl. Mean, oh, the guinea fowl.